This video will focus on the Raw Panel Explorer tool that will allow you to investigate what happens on different panels uh, that are Raw Panel on your network. And we have used it quite a lot already, but now we'll look at more features. And uh, also that leads us into looking at features of the Raw Panel protocol. The Raw Panel Explorer has this very wonderful view of controllers. And one trick that I want to start out showing you is that you can have it in an aggressive mode that will actually scan the network a little more heavily for things. I uh, will just do that real quick here. So um, I have all these open and this is my window for the Raw Panel Explorer. So let's just exit that. And then I add aggressive. Now, uh, as usual, I think that is a double S. Yes. Okay. So what does aggressive mode mean? It means that it will open up this view and it will actually connect to the panels read the topology back and then disconnect. That's the aggressive part. It will tell you how many hardware components that you find on these panels and so on. So let's just take a little bit of a look at this, the, the, this extended mode. It has found a C15 legacy Skyhawk panel. It is right here. Uh, let me see. OK, that is the C15. I have the C31 right here. So they are real panels on the network. We also have the Rack Fusion Live. We'll get to that in a moment. So it just briefly connected to them. It was like almost a flash. And then read out this and then shut down the connection again. It will tell you ping times to the panels. It will tell you the serial number, the model, which software version it had, if it is blue pill ready, which platform it's possibly on. Now, this one would be the iBeam platform, which is the um, uh, code name for blue pill. And, um, here we have the PDC Extreme V2, which is coming from our simulation environment. I think I have a different tab open here. So that is this panel uh, over here. Um, uh, why is it green? Ah, uh, it's also telling you that it's connected binary here. It connected binary to this one. So using that binary protocol, while in this case it used the ASCII protocol to connect to a microfly. I don't know where that is. It's on you know somewhere out at the office. I'm pretty sure. But these panels are just here next to me. Uh, where's the C15? Um, this one? Ah, okay. So the cable was weird. I'll just plug the cable in again. It misses that little locking tab. So we'll see that is popping up straight away here. Okay, let's just see. Okay, it's it should it should appear very shortly in this list. Is it? Uh, because this is scanning all the time. It's listening on the network. Yep, there we go. C15 popped up on the network and it is reading out the topology and so on. It will tell you the number of hardware components on the panels and all these uh, great things. Okay, so that was the aggressive mode. Let's just shut that one down again, but it can be useful, but it uh, might you might also want to think twice because you're actually connecting to people's panels. Although we are not messing with the panels, we are connecting to them. And that may not be um, a... Yeah, that might be controversial. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, now we have these. So let's just connect to the uh, Rack Fusion Live. That should be fairly safe because it's just here next to me on the table. So we have already seen that if I move like components, if I press buttons on the panel, if I rotate the encoders and so on, then I get the trigger scope over here telling me what is uh, inflowing, what communication is inflowing here. I don't see any commands of these, no. But if I connected using um, a, a telnet prompt here, then uh, let's just do that in this window. Uh, so we'll connect to that one. I think it's eight. All right. So I'll type in list just to make sure that it knows I'm binary. Um, binary, no, ASCII mode. <laughs> I'm not binary. Um, not in that sense. Uh, this is, um, you know, the various commands that, as you have seen it many times before, which is what the Raw Panel Explorer is helping you to do. But what I find most useful about this one is the ability for you to like point to one of the hardware components, uh, turn on the color of this hardware components by these simple buttons, uh, setting the state to, to be on. You see that little button here? Uh, I know the colors are like flipped on this model because it it has red and green diode swapped because this is like a first prototype of of the product. So it's it's kind of bad for this demonstration, but uh, because pink is not pink, pink is amber in this case. But uh, I think you get the point that if you had like a different panel, let's take the C15 in that case. Just need to watch out for the network cable. So here you can see that I'm able to ah. Yeah, of course I can't. I'm connected to the Rack Fusion Live. No, let's let's stay on that one. I just added a graphic to the button here. 
So all these things are in place. You can play with the text. You can play with extended return values and so on. So um, let's let's take a look at that. For instance, the extended return values that uh, we can return, and we should now do that just for the uh, because now we stay on screen, so we don't rely on my web camera here. So we take PC Extreme. So we connect to our emulated um, panel over here. Uh, is that now a good idea if I wanted to show the extended return values? Anyway, we'll just zoom in on that one. So once again, we can turn it on. We can set a color on the panel. We can also manipulate stuff in the uh, display like title line and uh, add a header, add some text, add some more text to it. And that all gets into this display. We can also send over this kind of uh, black and white content here. And then finally, we can, uh, let's say that we want to uh, simulate the um, a specific uh, uh, color code here, then RGB uh, for this one. We can uh, also do. If you just like me saw that the button was blanking out once in a while, it was because there was the blue pill right here. It was trying to connect to the serial, sorry, the IP address and the port number on this panel. And that was like stealing our shine all the time. So it, it was getting confused by that. But um, now at least I have established this. Okay, so we can also add like a blink pattern to this one. And you see, you know, all these things can be simulated. By the way, how does that look? Oh, these are the commands that will set the blink pattern down here. So that's again, the point of the raw panel explorer is that it will give you all these. This is how the binary command would look. Not that you would ever encode this yourself because you have uh, like a tool chain from us in the uh, online repos. We have like think raw panel library from Skyhoy. There you have a go code that will generate these protobuf messages automatically for you. Now, the most important thing that I want to go through is uh, not so much what you can do up here, because you should just play around with this yourself. I want to take a little bit of a look at the topology of things. So the topology in this table is like a view. Uh, if, if I click like this button, for instance, it's going to highlight that, or at least it did for a short while, this line here. So this is hardware component number one. It has the title cam one. It's a four way button. It has um, capability of red, green, and blue light in the LED. It has a display which is monochrome and 64 by 32 pixels. It uh, This one, mm, uh, difficult to explain just real quick here. But the type index, for instance, if we take that one and search, then you'll find that this is a reference to a generic type that describes how this button looks, uh, which size it has, how to render it in 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 the um, emulated environment or in you know when when you want to have a graphical representation of it and so on so we'll get to that in a moment but basically you see that the topology is just the list of hardware components on the panel and how they what they are called the number they have the type they have and so on um, on a pc extreme you find mostly buttons you find a few encoders here and the um, thing that would be interesting to look at if you if you want to see the underlying code is the JSON code that the topology, uh, ba basically that table you see right there is a, an interpretation of the actual JSON code, which is what you're asking the panel for if you type in panel topology question mark in the um, ASCII prompt when you're connected to it. So it has this section with HWC hardware component, and that has like the ID, the XY location on the panel, and also the type reference. And then uh, it says cam one in this case. So let's just go down and see the type called 133. So we scroll all the way past the all the topology types and we look at the type index. The type index would then have number 105, 106, and then we can find 133. It is right here. So this is the type that describes that little button right there. Notice that it is uh, 15 millimeters wide. These are tenth of millimeters. It is uh, 10 millimeters high. It has RGB capability. That's what we saw in the table. It is a, a B4 type, which is a four-way button. And it has the display size, width and height, uh, 64 by 32. And then this sub element is basically one that is telling the renderer that, uh, yeah, one thing is that you are rendering a rectangle of these dimensions, but then offset from this rectangle by this offset here and having this width and rounded corners like so and so, which is styling information for the SVG, please render a little dark gray rectangle that represents the display. 
And uh, implicitly, this one will be used for the display that we are specifying here because it will automatically use the first sub element to show the little display tile. All those rules are in the documentation, sorry, that is um, this document, raw panel v2, which is downloaded from the support repository from Skahoy uh, on GitHub. And in this document, you'll find this kind of information. So you should know it by now. But if you uh, go through this document, you'll not only find all the commands that we can send to and from the panel, you'll also find a section further down about topology. Uh, we are about here right now. And one of the things that would make a lot of sense to just quickly check, for instance, would be that list of uh, in, uh, input type uh, keys. Let's see if I could grab that. Oh, maybe now I spoiled it completely. So let's just quickly see if we can find it again. There we go. Okay, so that um, reference for the uh, in field in uh, in this object here is uh, B4. And what is that? That's a four way button, but it could be B2V for a vertically oriented two way button, or just a standard button, the B or an encoder with a button press or just an encoder without button press, or it could be an absolute vertical fader. Uh, typically faders or horizontal, or it could be a rotational like like a potentiometer. So these different types are documented in here with some additional parameters that you can uh, once in a while find inside of these products and so on. So that's basically what the topology is. And the document right here is the the manual you should read if you intend to render it like we are doing in our emulation tools and in the raw panel explorer, rendering that um, what what you see here is basically following the rules that this document is outlining. I want to wrap this video up by just making one point about the topology. And I know this is advanced, but it's kind of a point that is important because quite often I have people asking me, can you please supply an index of types? It, the type 133 is consistently referring to the 10 by 15 millimeter four way buttons on our controllers. But it may not always be so. And therefore, we reserve the right to say the type index is only valid within a single topology JSON file. It could be something completely different. And to make that point, I am now going to restart our emulator that we were just running, this one. And uh, let me just use help here because I need to see what it is I'm looking for. I am looking for this randomized types. And there's a little description here. I can use the value wild or I can just do something else. Okay. So if I, I think if I add this one like this and then uh, whatever, then we should, oof, that was not like so. Oh, because I forgot the H. Okay, so let's just do this again. Now we have this up and running again. Let's just close this one down, go over here. We can, ooh, yeah, not my intention. But anyway, just let's let's just reload. Um, ah, let's have it up. Okay, so it's just opening up here. And I want it in a separate tab because it's kind of nice to have it over here next to. But anyway, the raw panel explorer tool is already reconnecting to our newly emulated panel and it is reading the topology from it. So notice that the type index of the four way button is suddenly three instead of what it was before. We have nine, four and so on. So you see it's completely renumbered. And if you go into the topology and watch what we have right here, then we go to the type index and the type that was previously something else is now one. We have 10, we have two and so on, three, four. So this is just the point that uh, they can be renumbered, but as long as they're consistent inside the file, that's that's fine. And you should always only rely on rendering topologies based on the information supplied, not the types. No implicit things should be stored in your system. That is uh, basically the rule. Otherwise, it's sort of breaking down in the long run, and we are invalidating the idea of having raw panel protocol and topologies being able to represent like any kind of panel because you would start to implement specific uh, types uh, in specific ways with extra topology material. Um, I mean, that means information outside the topology, and that's a bad thing. So this is what we don't want. And even to make that point even more crazy, instead of whatever, if you type in wild, as the uh, help would say, then I have now 
made a topology where I had completely randomized, randomized these numbers uh, from like one to, to one million. So there you really see the point of what I just said. Now, sorry guys, this is a lot of very detailed information about topologies in Raw Panel Explorer, but um, that final bit of the uh, walkthrough here is only to make sure that you, you understand how those types are, are being used. Although you see consistency, they it may not be like that. And uh, in general, the topology is, is the, the reason why raw panel is such an amazing technology that uh, really goes, you know, far into the future that we don't know because we can support panels that is not even created yet.